All right. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Tomer. Uh, thanks you, thank you for uh, joining me here today at Product School for this uh, brief uh, presentation about hardware and software PMing. Um, you know, I recognize there's a lot of different flavors to PMing, but this is kind of based on my own personal experience working in both areas, if you will. Uh, of course, there are things that are similar, but then there's a lot that is different. And I hope that this presentation will serve you as maybe a guide to uh, choosing the correct path for you. Um, if you are early in your career or are pivoting into product management, just getting finished with school, this uh, might be something that you uh, could be interested in. Um, and I wrote here in parentheses, these are the things I wish I knew. Uh, these are things that may have guided my decisions early in my career. All right. So um, short introduction of myself. Uh, there's some logos on the screen. This is basically my career. I started off uh, working on uh, defense-related products, uh, then moved to the, to the U.S. to get my uh, MBA at uh, Duke University. Right after graduation uh, is when I started working at Microsoft. Uh, I worked for Surface, which is a hardware product. And then uh, now I am working at Google, which is, of course, predominantly software. They do have some hardware offerings. I won't go into the details of my day-to-day -day job. This will be a general overview of kind of my experiences. All right, so first of all, um, I think we need to do some uh, definitions here. Um, what is hardware and what is software, right? So, um, for example, your smartphone versus any application that you may have installed on it. So the smartphone is a piece of hardware and the app is a piece of software. I think that's pretty obvious, but then there are places where, it get, where this gets complicated. Like for example, the drivers on any operating system that you have, either your phone or your laptop, are those uh, the firmware, are those software or hardware um, or a combination of the two? Then think about things like accessories that are attached to hardware devices like uh, your phone cover or protective screens. Are those hardware? Uh, pretty obvious, yeah, but are they hardware in the classical sense that you and I might be thinking about? Are they technological enough to be considered a product? Um, depends. Cloud services. So the services are definitely software, but they're running on huge servers and, and server farms that are, you know, obviously hardware machines. Um, when you provision a virtual machine, you're provision, provisioning a remote piece of hardware. You're using software to do that. So the line gets a little bit uh, blurry and complicated. Um, bottom line here is if you're considering a role like this and it's not completely clear to you, just go ahead and make sure you understand the scope of that role and what is really uh, expected of you, more on hardware, more on the software side. It will really depend on the team that you're joining or the organization that you're joining and how it is structured. Okay, so a little bit of definitions there hopefully helps you sort things out a little bit. Now let's talk about things that are similar. So obviously the soft skills. Um, you know, uh, the soft skills are things like cross-functional teamwork, being able to influence without authority, um, a good ability to storytell, storytelling, communication, uh, being able to convey your vision and strategy for the product that you are in charge of, and just ultimately being the voice of the customer. So sitting in those meetings, being, it, being able to articulate your customer's uh, pain points and you know what's bothering them and why that should be solved now versus later. So uh, negotiation. So those are the soft skills and mostly those are similar. Um, so if you feel like you're good at that or improving, then uh, awesome, kudos to you. Uh, keep those well sharpened and uh, ready to go. Um, it's not going to change whether you're in hardware or software. Now on to some differences. Yeah, that is the majority of this deck here. So time moves differently. Um, what does that really mean? So I found that in software and hardware, the rhythm and lead time of these products is very different. So with hardware projects, you may get 12 to 24 months even of lead time. 
um, meaning the time between you kick off the product that you're working on until the time that it is generally available or that it is launched. Um, also, those end dates or deadlines are usually pretty hard. So, you know, there's a launch event coming up that's probably not going to move by a whole lot. If it moves, then it's maybe uh, going to move a full year or maybe your product is actually going to get canceled. So hardware has long lead time and they're pretty solid. The times are pretty, pretty solid. Software moves in short sprints. Uh, you've heard the term sprints, I'm pretty sure. And sometimes it's just as fast as those release cycles. So you'll have uh, every time you have a new version, it's going to release and go to general availability. There's not going to be a launch event. People are just going to get like an update on their machines, but it is uh, going a GA. So those uh, rhythms are very, very different. Hardware cycles, back to hardware. So hardware cycles are predictable. Remember I said those times are pretty solid. Um, you know, there, there are companies that we've grown used to getting hardware from every year at a specific uh, month. Uh, so we know something is coming and you can bet there are teams that are working towards that date. So if you are early in your career, maybe think about timing here. Um, if you're considering joining a hardware product or a hardware uh, producing company, and you know that they they have a launch tentatively planned for the next six months, that might be a good time to join because uh, you may be able to benefit some early uh, impact, early uh, wins in your career. You won't have to wait uh, a full year or 24 months um, until you get you know that awesome new shiny bullet point on your uh, resume, right? Okay. Next difference, um, yeah, plans change. So uh, this picture of the evergreen stuck in the Suez Canal um, is an example of how uh, big ships uh, are hard to uh, maneuver, okay? So hardware changes are much more painful. Uh, it is very hard to steer the course of uh, a big ship just as it is a, just as it is hard to change the plans for a hardware product. Making mistakes in hardware is very, very um, costly. And then fixing them is even more costly. So sometimes you would see hardware products in hardware groups leaning on software for those fixes. So it's it sounds like patchwork, but ultimately it is right the optimal thing to have that uh, hardware launch in time. Um, and with minimal cost, so the software will be the one picking up uh, the slack. Um, when you deal with software that is related to hardware, that has its toll as well. So we talked earlier about drivers and firmware. Um, it will get harder and harder for you to push changes into, so into low-level firmware and drivers. The more the more uh, mature the product is in its lifetime. So if it's right about ready to go, about to go a general availability, the chances that you will have to put in any last minute changes into software, low level software is small. Um, so take that into consideration. Um, and lastly about this, so a lot of features and the things that you as a product manager would want to push into your product get left on the cutting room floor when you deal with hardware. Um, you know, it probably shouldn't be any surprise to you that a lot of the hardware we see every year is basically just incremental improvement on the previous generation. You don't really see a lot of things that are totally novel that you've never seen before that have a, you know, a completely new set of features because it's really hard to uh, take risk on those products. I'll talk about that in a minute, but it is um, just not a lot of data that you can go on. And there's a lot of impact in terms of supply chain and resources and factory. Um, think about things like physical safety of your, of your device users. Like think about battery. You've seen batteries inflate uh, maybe somewhere online. That is not a place that hardware manufacturers want to be. 
And so it's really those considerations that ultimately leave a lot of things on the cutting room, cutting room floor. And you as a product manager need to have the stomach to kind of, you know, okay, uh, I'll take it. Uh, I'll try it next time. Maybe I'll think of something uh, even more novel or have more customer sentiment behind this new feature. All right, uh, next, um, I alluded to this a minute ago. So really, um, when you deal with hardware, there is not a lot of data to go on, right? So if, especially if you're thinking about something that's really new, that the market has never seen before. Uh, I think there's a famous quote by Henry Ford uh, that asks, if you ask someone, you know, what would they like to see in their next uh, uh, chariot, they would say faster horses. They never imagined a car. So it's kind of like that. The customer set that you have to interview and get some early feedback from is very small. Uh, the hardware that you're working on is probably um, confidential. And so getting that out to customers to test and give you feedback on is hard. And then making sure that nothing leaks is even harder. Uh, I bet you have all seen leaks of hardware online. That is something that, um, you know, hardware companies uh, don't like. It's not great for their PR and it reduces from their launch moment. Um, so it's very hard to get data is kind of my bottom line here. With software, it's much, much easier, right? Um, Every company nowadays uh, collects data uh, and in some way about their users, anonymized, of course, and but just using that data to educate themselves about what the customer needs, even though they might not be talking about it or articulating it verbally, verbally, right? Uh, so you end up doing guesswork. So just guessing, uh, following your gut instincts, uh, some little data and anecdotal information that you have in hardware. Uh, last point here for differences is around strategy. Okay, so um, think about the strategy for your product, especially for hardware. Um, so hardware oftentimes is not uh, there for the sake of itself. What do I mean by that? So when you deal with hardware, oftentimes the play is an ecosystem play. Uh, think about devices from Alexa, right? Um, Alexa Home, Alexa uh, Dot. Uh, those devices are cheap, like really cheap. I don't actually know the numbers. I didn't work for, for Amazon or for Alexa, but I would assume that they're running on a very low margin, if that. Um, here in the picture, you see Amazon's uh, Alexa microwave. And you look at something like this and you think, hey, what, what gives? Like, this is super weird. Why would I have a, a, a microwave with Alexa in it? Um, and that's because the microwave is not there to uh, be a microwave. It's there to uh, be, uh, you know, um, uh, the vehicle for Alexa. So the vehicle for the Amazon ecosystem. So the vehicle for you to get more out of Prime and using Prime even more. So it's spinning that flywheel uh, for Amazon, even though the hardware itself is very, very cheap. And so if you sit in, if you're on a team like that and you're starting to think about your strategy, your strategy really shouldn't be how many units you're selling every year, but it should be more something like how am I lifting up this ecosystem that is called Alexa and Amazon and Prime, right? Those are metrics that are hard to find, but if you're good at it, then basically, um, you know, that'll make your job much easier. Uh, software is more uh, often more there for, you know, its own sake. So software, if you're like a recurring uh, revenue uh, type of service, you'll start seeing direct impact of your product. With hardware, again, it's more indirect than anything else. Um, yeah, basically that's it there. So with this final slide, uh, I want to give you kind of tips for um, for your early uh, for your early years of your career. So consider your timing. Um, if you're joining a hardware product, 
if you're in it for uh, a quick win or you're just interested in really uh, accelerating your career, think about when you join those companies. Are you more the type that likes to firefight or are you more the type that likes to, that likes to uh, multi-thread? Um, so firefighting means you're just taking out the fire um, as they come up. That, that will be mostly the work you have in, in uh, software or are you multi-threading? So with hardware, because of the lead time, the long lead time, you'd have to have multiple uh, buns in multiple ovens to start landing those in succession. Um, how do you think about strategy and foresight versus data? So with software, there's lots of data usually. Um, and with hardware, you basically need to use anecdotal data and, um, you know, uh, bet uh, a little bit, use your gut instinct, um, use foresight and have more strategy. And then last point here is that you know, nothing is set in stone. Uh, transitioning is possible between hardware and software, but I'll just say that in my experience, it's not straightforward. You may have to take another step along the way, uh, you know, maybe take another course or a semester at school to um, put the uh, plug the gap on some knowledge. Um, and you will for sure need to tweak your resume if you're going to move from one area to the, to the other to make it uh, so that, you know, your interviewer understands that you have those soft skills that are similar and that you can, uh, you know, understand those areas very quickly, ramp up quickly and so on. That's it. Um, thank you all for joining today. Feel free to find me on uh, social media. That is my handle on LinkedIn and other places. So I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks everybody.